Welcome to Wednesday Night Bible Study, a place where we come to serve God. Tonight's message will be presented by Rev. Dr. Lillian Miles, the Associate Pastor of Canaan Baptist Church. the Lord, to Pastor Johnson and to Lady Johnson and to the entire Canaan family, I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm very grateful for this opportunity to speak to you this evening, to bring you a word from the Lord. This evening I will be speaking from the Gospel of Matthew, 
chapter 11, verses 20 to 25, and then I'm going to skip down to verses 28 through 30. The subject matter that I will speak to you about this evening is rest in the Lord. That's the title of the sermon, the Word of God, rest in the Lord. Let us pray. Mercy for God, we come now in the name of Jesus to give your name, honor, glory, and praise. I lift up my eyes into the hills from which cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Now let the words of my mouth, the meditations of our hearts, be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, you are our strength and our redeemer. More of thee and less of me. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And so I read, starting at verses 20. Then Jesus began to denounce the towns in which most of his miracles had been performed because they did not repent. Woe to you, Chorazin. Woe to you, Bethesda. For if the miracles that were performed in you had been performed in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago and sat cloth in ashes. But I tell you, it will be more bearable for Tyre and Sidon on the day of judgment than for you. And you, Capernaum, you will be lifted to the heavens? No, you will go down to Hades. For if the miracles that were performed in you had been performed in Sodom, it would have remained it to this day. But I tell you that it would be more bearable for Sodom on the day of judgment than for you. At that time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heavens and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learnt and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this is what you were pleased to do. Verse 28, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The word of God to the people of God. When we open... Um, our text today, we see Jesus denouncing three cities. He said, Woe unto you, Chorazin, woe unto Bethesda, and woe unto Capernaum. These are religious cities. These three cities are in and around Galilee, the place where Jesus was raised. These cities ruled by the Pharisees and other religious leaders of that day. They knew Jesus. They was aware of his miraculous performance all around their cities. They were religious people. They knew God, but they rejected Jesus, refused to identify him as the Messiah, refused to acknowledge him as the Son of God. They never seen anyone do the work that Jesus and his disciples did. And they knew that Jesus was of God, but yet 
they rejected Jesus. They rejected God because they felt that their wisdom was better than the wisdom of God. That their power was stronger than the power of God. And so they rejected Jesus, called him a fraud. And so it's, as we uh, open the text, we see Jesus denouncing these three cities. And that was not his goal. He didn't come to denounce religious cities. But he came to, to heal and to bless and to forgive and to deliver and to help people to repent so that they will know the kingdom of God and they would be saved. But because these religious leaders chose to depend on their own wisdom opposed to allowing Jesus to be who Jesus really was, they were given severe denouncements. Because a woe is not just a slap on the back, but a woe is a, like a curse. It is a warning of deep suffering to come. A warning of trouble. And so Jesus was not denouncing them because that would make him feel better, but he was not denouncing them because he is who he is, the truth and the life. And because God is the truth, he walks in truth and will not tell a lie. For you see, when we are called to lead, we are called to be vessels for the Lord. We are called to do the right thing unto the peoples that set before us. Why? Because the peoples that we are called to lead are God's people. And therefore, in leadership, we are on sacred ground. And as leaders, we are called to help and not to destroy, to lift up and not to break down. But even though these leaders uh, persecute Jesus, lied upon Jesus, refused to receive him as the Messiah, as the child of God. It didn't change the way Jesus felt about his father and the work that he was called to do. Jesus just continued to, to thank God. He thanked God because even though there were many followers of the Pharisees, the leaders of the day, as Jesus began to perform miracles and feed the hungry and teach the people about the kingdom of God, folks began to follow him. They began to follow him because they saw with their own eyes that this man was from God. People were getting healed and delivered 
and they thirst for truth. And they're able to see that Jesus was the truth in the life. And so they followed Jesus. Jesus continued to lift up his, his, his eyes to the Lord and thanked him for these children who chose to believe. And when I say children, I'm not talking about little children in terms of age, but I'm talking about those who became children of God, those who believed and followed Jesus. And so, um, as he continued to, to do his ministry and continue to thank God for the grace of God that was falling upon him, he knew that those who refused him would also be refused by God. And so we see Jesus comparing these uh, religious cities to pagan cities. He compared um, Chorazin and Bethesda in Capernaum to three pagan cities, Tyre, Sidon, and Sodom. These three pagan cities were evil systems that were destroyed by God. And yet Jesus said, to you religious cities who knows the Lord but refuse to repent, woe to you because on the day of judgment you will be judged more harshly than those pagan cities where the gospel was not preached and who did not see the miracles that Jesus performed. He said the reason why is because those pagan cities, had they seen the miracles of Jesus, they would have repented. And to this day, would probably be saved. In other words, a lot of times, um, in modern times, we speak about um, people who convert um, or people who um, believed it or became saved because the gospel was preached to them. They may have been um, drug, ad drug addicts, alcoholics, or oh, just many um, negative or dark behavior behaviors they may have possessed, but they decided to convert and to follow Jesus. And we hear a lot and see a lot that these people, once they convert, from doing the wrong thing, they often become stronger Christians than the people who have been uh, knowing and serving God for a long time and maybe even most of their lives. Um, somehow, sometimes, those who are traditional Christians can become lackadaisical in their walk. And this is not all the time because we hear that a lot, but the truth of the matter is that there are so many that have been saved and are still saved and are still strong believers in the Lord. But what Jesus was saying is that when you know the Lord, but you still refuse him, or when you know what's right, but you chose to do what is wrong, then when judgment comes, you will be judged more harshly than those who didn't know or didn't believe because they didn't know. 
And so Jesus continued to give thanks to the Lord. And that's what we should do as Christians when we find ourselves in situations where we might be um, rejected, we might be um, falsely accused or treated unequally. We still should praise God always because he never sleeps or slumber and he knows what is best and he's still working things out. But Jesus um, pronounced these woes upon these religious cities because when you are called to leave God's people and you refuse to do so, innocent folks can get hurt, can be killed, and can be caused to not be able to lead the lives that God has called them to lead. Because when there is a great rebellion against God, what follows is injustice and bigotry. And where there's injustice and bigotry, there's hurt and there is inequality and there is wrongdoing toward innocent people and God loves his people. He is all for especially those who are poor and downtrodden and so as leaders who refuse to do what is right they will pay a, a big price. But all in all, when we are called to lead, and that's all of us who are Christians, we are called to be responsible. We are called to do the right thing. We are called to honor God in our behavior and in the way we lead our lives. But the text shows us today that God understands rejection, understands um, when, when his people are not treated in the way they should be treated by their leaders. And God has a way of making sure that all of his people have a way out. And so today in our lesson, we see that he's made a shelter for us in the storm and that he extends an invitation. He extended it to the people in his time and he extends it us to us today. And he said those of us who have grown weary and burdened to come unto him and he will give us rest for our souls. And we're living in a, a time where there is a lot of weariness, a time where folks are tired, where folks are grieving. We've come to a number of over 200,000 souls that have been killed during this pandem pandemic, as well as others who have died during these last six, seven months. People are concerned. They're worried about unemployment. Many families have lost jobs, don't know where their next meal is coming from because people who have been living from week to week or maybe just two paychecks away from not having anything. 
and they're suffering today, and there's a threat of so many others losing their jobs. So we're living in a time where people are wearied, they're anxious about many things, they're anxious about the upcoming elections, they're anxious about their children and school, and they're just tired. Um, there's a lot of depression among the people. We're dealing with gun violence in the street, domestic violence in the homes. And there's just a lot going on today. But we thank God that we serve a God who knew that this day would come. King Solomon tells us in the book of um, King Solomon in the book of uh, Ecclesiastes he tells us that there's nothing new under the sun and that there's a time for everything God already had a place have established a place for the weary and tired souls and just as he extended his hand to those peoples in his day, he extends that same hand to us today. And he says, come unto me, all of you who are worried and burdened down. If you are tired, there's a place, and that place is in the Lord. That's where you can rest. God understands that no one is called to deal with trouble 24 7 and he says troubles do not last always but we are in a storm right now however he wants us to rest even while the storm is still passing he says come unto me all ye who are worried and burdened down and i will give you rest because my burdens are light and you will find rest for your weary soul so this is not a escape from reality the ex all these things that we are experiencing are real God does not call us to escape but he do call us to rest he tells us in his word to be anxious for nothing but in all things through prayer and supplications to let our requests be known unto him and that he will give us that peace that surpasses all understanding. There's no need to be so depressed that we are almost not functioning. Um, we can rest in the Lord because this storm will pass. But he calls us to pray, to meditate on his word, and to be at peace, and not to deal with this 24-7. Turn it off. Turn off the TV sometimes, and just know that you can go into that quiet place where God will give you rest. Not only will he give you rest, if you will accept him as your physician, accept him as your advocate. Accept him as your teacher because he will teach you well. He will give you divine guidance. He will make a way for you out of nowhere. He's just that kind of a God. And so the word to you this evening given to me by God is to come unto him and to rest. This season, too, shall pass. And though we cry over those that we lost, we know that the joy of the Lord is our strength. And that he says when we are weak, we are yet strong in him. He's left us the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, who will comfort us in our time of grief said that the tears will last for night, but joy will come in the morning. And yes, 
We do grieve over our loved ones. I too have lost members of my family during this season. I too have had those days where I didn't want to get out of the bed because we know that as Christians, we too suffer like everyone else. We get depressed. We get tired. We get wearied. And there are some times when we question God. But even though you may not feel him or see him, just know that he's always there. And he's that arm, his hand is always extended to us. And guess what? If you are not wearied, if you are not tired, and you understand that God is a God of restoration, he has restored your health, restored your energy, then know that it's time to get back on that battlefield. Yes, we are soldiers on the battlefield for the Lord. But guess what? The battle is not ours, but it is God's. He tell us that. We're vessels. And so when we are good, let us help others to be good. Let us minister to others who may not be good. And this is what this is all about. And so my message to you this evening is very simple. And that is God is calling us to rest. Rest in Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. And know without a doubt that this too shall pass. Rest in the Lord, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Sing we come before the
Thank you for joining us this Wednesday. We'll see you next week.